guys, EBP Man here, and yes, this is the Note 8, and we're going to go through the setup process. What does it actually take for you to um, start it up, set it up, and convert or move all your information over? How much configuration will you have to do? How much of it will come off automatically? Let's go ahead and check it out. Now, the first thing that we're going to have to do, obviously, is uh, take off all this wonderful plastic that we have all over the phone. Now, I do have um, some screen protectors and some accessories that we're going to be looking at uh, later on, uh, but we'll go ahead and move some of the plastic off, and we're going to go ahead and power up the phone. Uh, first, um, first glance, I have to say, it feels really good in the hand. It is a little bit larger than the S8, uh, but uh, we'll go ahead and power it up. There it is. We'll let it go through the startup process. Samsung has some really great um, screens. You can see how dark that uh, black is and how vibrant the whites are as they pop. So again, this is an AT&T version. Now the interesting thing about this is that while I got this directly from Samsung, I wonder what the unlocking process is going to be since uh, this I bought straight out. Um, I would guess that they're not going to have the process to unlock these immediately, so we'll have to check and see uh, how that's going to work a little bit later. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go uh, through this uh, setup process. We're going to choose English, choose Next. Uh, there's no SIM card, and the next thing I'm going to do is set up my Wi-Fi. Now once you've um, set up the Wi-Fi, uh, you're going to accept all the terms and conditions. You, you really can't go beyond the screen without doing that. It's going to go ahead and check for updates. I'm connected right now uh, via Wi-Fi, and the next step is to sign into my Gmail. Now, once you've logged in through your email, um, it's going to look and see which devices uh, or device backups you have in place, and what you can do is do a restore for many of these. So you'll notice that I have several devices here because I have some Samsung tablets as well as other devices that it's looking at, but this one on the very top, that's my S8. So you have the choice to either choose that and then uh, continue, or you can choose not to restore. Now I'm going to go ahead and choose the restore uh, so that I get all my information over. Uh, and it's important that you th really consider that, especially if you don't want to worry about having to rekey in a lot of the information like Wi-Fi access points. Uh, it also could include even uh, your email um, IDs and credentials. So we're going to go ahead and choose uh, that one, which is uh, my last phone. And I have a lot of apps, so I have the choice at this point to either purge and start cleaning things out, or I have the, uh, the option to actually install everything. Now if you want to reduce the number of apps that are coming across you can always click on this and then just uncheck the ones you want to remove. I'm just going to go ahead and hit continue. Now while that process continues you do have a couple choices. You could set up your face recognition, set up your fingerprint scanner, iris scanner, patterns. Uh, there's a lot of things that you can do. I'm going to leave this for later so I'm going to choose no thank you. As we go through some of the tips and tricks we'll talk about each one of these and why we would choose them. So we'll choose skip. We're going to skip anyway. Google services, hit next. I leave them all on. Now you can uh, set up the Google Assistant. I'm going to hit continue. Ask if you want to include location history. And once you go through your location history selection options, it will continue to restore. Now the next step in the process is to go through this transfer process uh, using AT&T's tools. I typically skip this, so I'm just going to go ahead and choose skip. And uh, the next thing is to go through my accounts and services. I'm going to go ahead and hit skip as well because this is all at and stuff. And I'm just going to say I'm going to exit this and hit OK. And now the next step is to set up your Samsung account. Now this is really important, guys. If you didn't do this previously and you're trying to get your Note 7 promotion for your Note 8 purchase, Samsung would not have known that you had your Note 7. So you ended up having to prove uh, purchase. You'd have to get a receipt. So I encourage you to sign in and create a Samsung account if you've never done it so that your purchases are tracked. In other words, this phone. We don't know. We expect that this phone is going to be problem free. If in the event that it does have a problem and you haven't registered it and there is some type of promotion to uh, really deal with the pains of dealing with the problems from the phone, you're going to go through a more difficult time trying to prove that you had the ownership. So create an account 
or sign in. Highly encouraged. You also have Find My Phone here. You have also Samsung Pass. I use Samsung Health as well. There's also a backup tool uh, uh, which is called the Samsung Cloud. This also uh, ties into Samsung Pay which I highly encourage as well. So I'm going to go ahead and sign in. Now the next thing that you'll need to focus on is agreeing to terms and conditions yet again and then go through the welcome screens for Samsung. So now I'm getting welcomed, uh, has my name as well as my email. I could add a photo if I'd like. I'm going to hit next and now it's asked me do I want to restore from the cloud or do I want to copy the data from my device. I'm going to do the copy. This would take a little bit too long for me. So what I'll do is I'll choose that next. So the first thing I did is I took, as the illustration indicated, that OTG adapter, uh, connected the USB cable to it, and then ran the cable over to my S8. I'm going to choose Allow so that it will grant access to this phone. And now it's connecting. Now the goal with this transfer is that the wallpaper, the look and feel, everything about my phone is going to transfer over and look exactly the same on this phone. That's going to reduce a significant amount of time. In addition to taking the look and feel, all my icons and my layout, it's going to copy my text messages, my call log. It will also include, uh, to some extent, even some of the credentials needed to access some of the apps. So this is a really good and fast way for you to convert. Now, depending on the phones, the amount of data that gets converted varies. So if you're using a non-Samsung phone, your experience is going to differ. Also, if you're using an older Samsung phone, the amount of content coming over may also differ. So now what we'll do is let's uh, move this one to the side because it's connected and you can see what I'm referring to right here. So what we have here are all the things that can be copied over, all my contacts if needed. I'm not going to choose my contacts because all my contacts are cloud-based. Now you'll notice that there's some options here, but I'm just going to say leave the contacts out of it because they'll come with Google automatically. All my text messages, and boy, do I have a lot of text messages, 6,442 messages. Now, those are not individual messages. That could be chat streams. It could be photos. I'm going to have to clean that up. I'll do that a little bit later. You do have calendar items if you needed, any reminders, Samsung Notes, which I have, call log history. And you notice all this data, um, apps with app data. So I'm hoping that a lot of the settings are going to re be retained. Wi-Fi notice, accessibility Wi-Fi and app settings are going to come across, home screen settings, um, images, anything that I have local on the phone, and I don't have a lot. I have 226, uh, also music, and then uh, you can see all the things here. Now, one of the things that will not come over during this conversion process is anything that you have in your private folder that you're going to have to do manually. Let's go ahead and start the process. Now the transfer process is going to vary from phone to phone. In this case, because we have um, 174 apps, a lot of data is coming over. It took uh, several minutes. It would take about 10 minutes uh, to process. The phone is already complete, and you'll notice that it says that uh, everything is all done. But you'll notice on this side, this phone is still going through the process of updating the apps as well as updating uh, the note data. My phone has not changed its look and feel to be let's go ahead and do this, to look like this one over here. So eventually this one will look the same. Now for those of you who use the uh, secure folder and all the features that are in there, there are, is a way where you can back up that data to the Samsung Cloud and they give you around 15 gig to work with. You'll have to go into uh, the backup of secure folder setting and just make sure that the backup has been complete. Now, if you've never done this, don't worry, because what will happen is you'll get in your notification panel after the transfer has been complete, a message indicating don't forget to uh, back up your secure data and restore it. So what I'm doing right now is I have seven gig worth of content in my secure folder. My secure folder is how I separate my business uh, from my personal phone. And all that data right now is being backed up into the Samsung Cloud and then I can restore it back onto this phone and I don't have to worry about the data or all my settings in the secure folder. For those of you who have never used a secure folder and don't know what it is, I will be covering this as well in the tips and tricks for the Note 8. Now the setup process is complete. It took probably about 20 minutes because first of all I have a lot of apps, a lot of messages that needed to be backed up, and just a lot of other configurations that I had. But I just wanted to show you what the end result was. Uh, you'll notice from top to bottom these look the same. Obviously there's um, some slight 
shifting going on here because of the screen size, but for the most part, um, they're the same. One of the things that I noticed right here is that there's um, two apps that are missing. I'll have to see uh, why those didn't come over, but you'll notice that my watchmaker is not there and VLC is not there, but I also don't have the gear um, paired to this one, and that may be the dependent. Uh, application there. You'll notice when I go over here, um, I have one there that I had to reinstall, but for the most part, everything came across. My widgets also um, match. Um, you'll notice that again, I'm seeing some slight discrepancies here, so my PIA didn't show up, but it's, uh, I would say it's probably higher than 90%. Um, configured uh, the same. Now, one of the things that you are going to be noticing uh, if you use this feature is the fact that the emails uh, will require you to re-enter your password. But your Wi-Fi access points, um, all the other settings seem to come over quite nicely. So this includes the installation or setup process uh, for the Samsung Galaxy Note 8. Uh, I will have some videos on tips and tricks, configuration, everything that you need to know coming up um, either today or tomorrow. We're going to be going through all the cases that we've received as well as the cases that uh, we haven't reviewed yet. I have um, a significant number of new cases like these that just came in from Zizo that we're going to be doing reviews. So stay tuned, subscribe, share, and please by all means like. Thanks for watching guys.